Hello everybody, my name is Skepsis, and welcome to part 3 of my mixing tutorial series in partnership with Splice. Splice is a cloud platform that lets you back up your work with unlimited free storage. The site makes it easy to collaborate with other artists and share full production sessions with anyone anywhere on the planet. You can do this privately or upload your files publicly for anyone and everyone to see, which is exactly what I have done with this tutorial series. If you want to, you can follow the link below this video, download Splice and the project file, and follow along and do exactly what I do. In the first video of the series, we focused on EQ cutting to make space in your mix. In the second video, we utilized the entire stereo range for a huge sound. Now in this video, we're going to go over some of the most fundamental practices of the mixing world to get the best end product possible. We're going to start off with one of the most important things in the entire music production industry, side chaining. Side chaining is using a compressor to duck the volume level of other tracks according to something that peaks loudly like a kick drum. By doing so, we stop huge peaks of volume information from going through your master chain into your final limiter, which just gives you a cleaner end product, and one that's easier to work with. So how do you sidechain in Logic Pro X? We have to start off by giving every track that isn't the kick drum a route to a channel where we will apply a compressor. So what you have to do is just click on the first track, go down here to Stereo Out, hold down, select Bus, and Bus 7. We can then name bus 7 right here. We'll call it sidechain. Now you go down the list, and on every single track except for the kick drum, select bus 7 sidechain. Now on our sidechain track, click in the auto effects section, select dynamics, compressor, and stereo. We're going to want an attack of about 65, a ratio of about 8, a release of 5 milliseconds. We're going to unclick auto and we're going to put up the compressor threshold just a little bit. Now before we can actually start to sidechain the audio information, we need to create a trigger. If we use the kick drum that's already in the song, we'll have less control over the shape of the volume's modulation. I found that my favorite way to create a trigger is to create a new software track, click on the instrument, and select Klopfgeist. I'm not actually sure how you pronounce that, but that's my best try. If you play a note, you'll hear a very short click sound. Copy the MIDI track, from the sub bass or the low mid bass, a click will happen at every note. Now the good thing about this is the Klopfgeist allows us to change the length of the click. So if our side chain isn't exactly how we want it, we can change it afterwards using this VST. Now select a track like Brightest Fuzz, which should be part of bus 7, our side chain bus. Click on the compressor. Now the side chain are only side chain according to either an audio track or a bus, so we need to turn this track's output into a bus output. So on instrument 10, which is where our Klopfgeist is, we're going to select Stereo Output, Bus, Bus 8. We're going to call this one Trigger, and we're going to change its output to No Output. Now we won't hear the clicking sound, but it will automate our sidechain. Click on the compressor, go to where it says Sidechain None, and change it to Bus 8, which is our Trigger Bus. Now if we solo Bus 7, we should begin to hear. Now all we have to do to change the length of the volume modulation is turn up the tonality on our Klopfgeist. You'll hear the difference as I play through it now. Now let's adjust the Klopfgeist as we play the entire track all together. Alright, we're finished the side chain. That was quite a lengthy process, but if you look at the output, you'll find that our output level is much smoother now. We don't have as many ups and downs, which will be much easier to work with in the mastering process. The next thing we can do is fill in empty frequency space in our mix that we haven't filled up with instruments. So for an arpeggiator, we're just going to create a new software instrument track. And we're going to select the ES2 synth. Just take the first preset that it pops out, go to MIDI effects, and select arpeggiator. Mess around a little bit, 1 16th is good, put it on up, down, variation 2, octave 2, really doesn't matter. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into our chords here, into the MIDI, we're going to just copy that very first chord. I'm going to paste in this chord, and I'm just going to run it through the entire duration of where we want it to play, just like that. 
and we're just going to turn down a whole bunch. And all we're doing here is creating opportunities for the song to create harmonies or harmonic information. May as well throw in some delay, some stereo delay as well. And I'm going to run the output into our sidechain now, into bus 7. Sounds awesome. So something to remember is that when you're mixing, there's literally an infinite amount of things you can do. But with this series, what I tried to do was just make you and everyone else watching aware of some of the largest and most commonly done things in the mixing world. Anyways, thank you very much for coming through this journey with me. The three mixing tutorials brought to you by Splice. My name is Skepsis. It would mean a lot to me if you'd check out my SoundCloud account. And that being said... I hope that you've learned something from this series, and I hope that you'll be hearing me again in the future. Goodbye.